The first time Falcons tried to create a super team, it failed pretty badly. But now in 2025, it looks like they may actually get what they want. The most expensive team ever that might include both Nico and Simple. But on top of that, it could still get even crazier. Okay, so we've got a lot to cover, but first, just a brief word about Falcons and where they've been. If you followed any number of esports, then you probably already know about the Saudi-based organization. They've sponsored a ton of players in a ton of different games, including fighting games. Some contend that these signings are part of a continued effort to sports wash the government's record of human rights abuses, and they can point to the connection between the company that owns Falcons and Saudi state money. Either way, it seems like that money is is getting used yet again because there's been a lot of talk recently about the future of the Falcons roster. Now for most of 2024, Falcons CS roster was composed of Snappy, Madden, Sun Pius, Dupree, and Magisk. But in late August, French streamer KRL reported that Falcons and G2 had reached an agreement to transfer Nico and that his final decision would be forthcoming. Cheap Esports reported that the deal was done a few days later, that the transfer is worth at least $1 million, and that the new contract is a three-year deal starting in January. Then just last week, about a month later, Falcons confirmed that the former ENTS core of Snappy, Madden, and Sun Pius will be broken up with the latter now benched and Simple standing in on loan. Another report came just a few days later. CIS region leaker Harumi said Falcons were looking to replace their IGL Snappy with Apex, currently on Team Vitality. The Team Vitality CS Twitter seemed to deny that with a tweet of their own. If the resulting roster decides to stick together into 2025, it could be a very interesting situation. But first, let's qualify this. Besides the simple Sun Pius thing, none of these moves have been confirmed by the teams or the players involved. First, let's consider the possibility that the above reports are true. That would mean that Nico is joining, simple potentially sticking around if this loan goes well, and at the very least, it looks like Falcons are considering replacing Snappy. Snappy had a whole year with this team and their peak was actually at number seven before they removed Boros from the roster and acquired Dupree. They definitely had some moments, but finding consistency was a struggle. It's probably not surprising that Falcons are thinking about doing this, and if they're already breaking up the ends core, maybe they think that this is just a good opportunity to try it out. Plus, if Apex is available, he could be a good fit. He's played with both Dupree and Magisk, along with Coach Zonic on Team Vitality. And while it isn't clear that both Danes would definitely stick around, the Sheep Esports report did say that Nico would not be replacing Magisk. So it feels like on paper, maybe Apex could just slot into this roster and do what he did on Team Vitality, except with Simple and Nico on the roster. If Apex sticks the landing, I think he could get results, but this theoretical roster could also have some problems with it. For example, Apex, Simple, and Nico are all known to get a little bit heated at times, and even if that didn't become a problem, even if fit wasn't an issue, you're still potentially looking at some role issues with that roster. But if it doesn't end up being Apex, it's kind of hard to imagine who it might be. Experienced IGLs are kind of hard to find right now, especially available ones, although that could change by the end of the year. Two recent moves kind of show you what teams are up against right now. G2 dropped Hooksy and brought in Snacks, whereas Astralis mended fences and brought back Kadian as their IGL, but this time as a rifler. Then you have IGLs who seem unlikely to move because their teams are doing pretty well right now. We've got Alexi B on Na'Vi or Chopper on Team Spirit as examples. Even though Mao's has struggled recently, it's hard to see them moving Shuhei given how many resources they've invested in him over the years. And while Kerrigan's tenure at FaZe has kept him gainfully employed, the team has hit a bit of a slump since April and it's possible changes are on the way at the end of the year. So if this Apex move seems weird, it may be Falcons putting feelers out, trying to get an idea of what the chances of actually getting one 
one of these IGLs might be at the end of the year. Outside of the names I mentioned, there are plenty more tier one IGLs out there, but many of them do call in their native language, which would have to be adjusted. And even if that's not the case, let's remember that whoever goes onto this team will at a minimum have to give orders to Nico, potentially Magus, Dupree, or even Simple. Speaking of Simple, this is another unknown in Falcon situation. He's technically still under contract to Na'Vi, but this loan lets Falcons take a look at him, see where his abilities are at, and just try the thing out. And based on him re-signing with Na'Vi for three years in late 2022, I think Falcons would need to buy out the remaining year on his contract if they decide they do want him permanently. If Simple can find his CSGO form in this game, he'd dominate but it's not clear that he definitely will. I wouldn't bet against it, don't get me wrong, but if you're looking for evidence that this time will go better than the last one month loan that Simple had with Falcons, you're gonna have to wait till he actually plays. As for Nico, it's hard to see how this is ever a bad move for Falcons, assuming that he gets the support that he needs from the rest of the roster to succeed. And I can't help but wonder if the org considered a version of this roster where Nico does some IGLing perhaps, and they bring in even more firepower. But anyways, but on that note, could Falcons bring in even more superstar players? One name that was linked to the pre-2024 signings was Monacy, and he poked some fun at rumors about him joining this new Falcons roster just yesterday. Obviously, if such a change happened, it would mean that Simple would swap to Rifle, something that he said he has an interest in trying in the right roster. On that note, we should probably talk about G2. If they only lose Nico, that's still a massive problem. But if they somehow also lost Monacy, that's just full-on rebuild territory. And listen, at the end of the day, part of G2's past success has been that they understand when it's time to just sell a roster and move on. In Monacy's case, he joined the team about three years ago, and I wasn't able to find a contract renewal announcement, which may mean that Falcons don't even need to buy out his contract. It may just end at the end of this year. On top of that, if you already know that Nico is going, then you have to imagine that Monacy is at least looking around at his options, right? So speaking about vitality, the impact of a potential Apex move, if that actually happens, would be substantial in my opinion, and for that reason, it's hard to believe that this would actually go down. If they do move Apex, finding a replacement who can just jump in and take over feels like it would be a challenging task. I mentioned FaZe and Kerrigan earlier, and while this team is far from bad, they definitely aren't getting the results that they want and expect. Since April, it's been tough, but they've still had some great individual performances. So if FaZe does decide to make huge changes, their players could definitely be in high demand. Brokey has absolutely come into his own as an opper, Frozen is a clutch lord nowadays, and Rops is still Rops. I would hate to see the Kerrigan and Rain era finally end. But with the amount of money being thrown around and the disruption that it will cause to rosters, definitely feels like it could be possible. It seems like the answer at least partially depends on the outcome of the Perfect World Shanghai Major in December. While reported moves like Nico's could already be done, lots of other players could be feeling out the rest of the year, and that includes FaZe. While the Major will definitely be hype and you should absolutely watch it, I do wonder how different the results will be from the last Major in Copenhagen. A lot of the same teams still stand atop the standings, and despite their haters, Na'Vi still seem like they could be a repeat threat here. G2 under Snacks is kind of hard to predict because they've been doing kind of well recently. Meanwhile, you've got teams like Maus and Spirit that are trying to shake off some recent results and get back on track. All in all, it looks like the end of this year could bring some massive changes, particularly if Falcons continues to throw around the money to attract superstar players to their roster. But even if that doesn't happen or it's more minimal than we've said here, you can definitely see that there are some teams that may make some changes at the end of the year and 2025 could look pretty different for them. Are we going to see this huge Falcon super team or will their efforts fall flat like the last time they tried? How bad is it for G2 if it's only Nico leaving? And could FaZe stick together somehow into next year? Let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our X, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.